sometimes you, you wonder which direction you want to take, but God gives us the direction he wants us all to take by the grace of God. Let us go to the book of Hebrews. And then we shall go to the book of Second um, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, so that uh, you can be able to connect these things. We are tying them together. We, we, we feel at the end of uh, what we are dealing with today, there is something that has to be communicated to believers that you will get to know that uh, you are not being policed by anyone, but there is something higher that you have to fit. Amen. And that one will help you. So we go to Hebrews chapter 8. From verse 3 says, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, in heaven. Amen? Amen? I hope all of you know that we need to put on our masks. I hope that is very important to all of us. We need to, to have all that stuff put on as we, we adhere to the regulation. Moses is being told, make it according to the pattern that I showed thee in heaven. Yes. So there is a pattern in heaven that is supposed to be produced, reproduced here on earth. And this is in the Old Testament. Now, we, we are going to uh, the book of Exodus, the same place, to find out because there are many things that we need to, to pick up. And then we go to 2 Corinthians 5. From verse 1, Exodus 25, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. That people are supposed to give willingly materials to bring God down. Amen. And this is the offering which you shall take of them. Gold and silver and brass. And blue and purple and scarlet. And fine linen and goat's hair. And ram skins dyed red. And butter skins and shittim wood. All for the light. Pieces, spices for anointing oil. For sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. God was not asking something that was very hard to get. Amen. He already saw it among the people. Amen. He knew these people have got the ability to bring something that would pull me down. So whenever God puts that, he knew that you have something that will bring him down. And let them make me a sanctuary. Okay, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Amen? Amen? According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. And the pattern of all the instrument thereof even shall you make it. So let's have some time to look into heaven. Amen. After the blood of Jesus Christ was seen. For we know, that is First, Second Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan and earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. There are several words employed there. House, tabernacle, and cloth. That is the same thing. It's a house, it's a tabernacle, it's a cloth. So when we, through the blood of Jesus, when we look up, we see something in heaven 
eternal. Amen. And it's a body. Amen, amen. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. What a wonderful word, oh Father, you've presented to us this morning, Lord. Amen. That heavenly Father, there is a heavenly pattern that was going to find its way to the earth. Amen. And heavenly Father, heaven is going to come to the earth. Amen. We come before you through the blood of Jesus Christ to sanctify your great holy name. Amen. To say there's never been God but you, Lord. Amen. And heavenly Father, you've invited us as you've spoken in the book of Psalms. Amen. Blessed is the man that thou causest to approach you. And Heavenly Father, we know you have got dimensions, you have got specification. Amen. You have got the weights of Father that you've put in the word. Amen. You don't want us to add anything on what has already been specified. Amen. Because this is how you dwell in heaven. Amen. And you want to bring the same atmosphere down here on earth. Amen. And Heavenly Father, as you see in the first Exodus, you telling Moses to tell the children of Israel to bring material, that this material will pro produce something that will pull you down. Amen. That was in the Old Testament. Amen. But even if Father, in this hour we are living in, there is something great that is taking place in our lives. Amen. And even if Father, we want to understand the measurement you've put for your people that you want to get in. Amen. We appreciate you this morning. Bless us, Father. We commit the service to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And even if Father, we believe those who are sick, Lord, will get their healing when the word is going forth. Amen. And Heavenly Father, your people, Lord God, will have the spirit to reach out to the greater spirit. Amen. And Heavenly Father, manifestation of your spirit will be seen among your people. Amen. We want to appreciate you this morning. We surrender the meeting to you. Amen. Those who are on the way coming, Father, we commit Amen. them to you. Amen. Those who are even watching over the net, Father, we commit them to you, Lord. Amen. Father, may your word of Father, Lord, prevail because your word is not bound, Father. Amen. May it produce a power. May it produce a knowledge. Amen. May it produce a wisdom of Father. Amen. And may this finally produce a boldness to go and take what is rightfully ours. Amen. We want to thank you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to go to, uh, again, Hebrews chapter 9, verse... Hebrews chapter 9. Everyone is fine? Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9. We want to read from verse 23. We can begin from verse 21. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Are you seeing the vessels of ministry sprinkled with the blood? Yeah. And moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. If you go to verse 19, it says, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to all the law, he took the blood of calves and goats, with the water and scarlet wool and high soap and sprinkled both the book and all the people. And this is, so we have got the people are sprinkled with the blood. We have got the book that is also sprinkled with blood. Seeing this, saying this, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with the blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Verse 23, watch that. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of the things in the heavens should be purified with this. Purified with what? Purified with water and blood. But the heavenly things themselves with a better sacrifice than this. So we have got the heavenly things and the pattern of the heavenly things. Amen. So Moses is told to reproduce the pattern of the heavenly things on earth. And then we see the process under which these things were subjected to. They were subjected to water. They were subjected to blood. But if you go to Exodus chapter 40 verse 9, they were also anointed with oil. So we find the vessels were sprinkled with water. Sprinkled with blood, then anointed with oil. Amen. Those are three elements that came outside and was poured on the vessel. Uh, last Sunday, we, we've been dealing with, the, we, we dealt with the, the porter, the clay, the vessels, and the wheel. Let's just background this because the other Sunday after, we dealt with the vessels that were in, were in Babylon. The vessel that began in the mind of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now we realize in the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. This man Jeremiah. 
has been sent by God to go into the house of the porter. Amen. When he goes into the house of the porter, the thing he begins to see, he sees clay. And then he sees a wheel. And then he sees the porter, the Bible says, making vessels. And then the vessel got mad in the hand of the porter. And then he broke it and made it again. Now, only those five verses found in the book of first, uh, found in the book of Jeremiah, those alone is the whole plan of redemption. It talks about the porter. Because God comes and tells Jeremiah, aren't the children of Israel, let, as, aren't they like clay in my hands the way the clay is in the hand of the porter? And then we realize the clay in the hand of the porter is what we call it is pliable. It is malleable. It can be molded in whichever shape without kicking. Praise the Lord. Amen. Without complaining. Amen. Because this man has got confidence and he has confidence and the courage when he's handling the clay. Amen. He knows the clay is going to, to produce exactly what is in my invisible mind. Amen. Something is going on in the mind of this man. And he's going to fix this to shape it. And the clay is malleable. Malleable means it can be hammered, pressed, without cracking. Amen. Amen. It can be hit, brought to the shape, not according to the feeling. No, according to the invisible Amen. mind of the porter. So when he's creating, he has got everything fixed. And I don't know for how long God is going to hammer this clay to bring it according to the image that is on the back side of his mind. So when God is telling Jeremiah to go into the house of the porter, it is because the porter is going to produce exactly what is on his mind from the vision to the image. Hallelujah. He's going to bring it from the image to from the vi vision to the image via the wheel and the clay that is right there. Amen. And while he's doing that, the Bible says it gets mud in his hands. And what does he do? He is now going to have what you call a wheel. He's going to take the clay, throw it back into the wheel. And the will is going to make some revolution to bring out an image. Praise the Lord. He's going to bring an image and the people will be able to see what is working on others it were. And will be able to understand what the invisible mind of the porter Amen. has always had before you took the clay. Amen. He knows where to get the clay. And he knows the kind of pressure he needs to assert on the clay to produce exactly what is on his mind. Amen. So we want to say when you came to the earth as a human being. Because we go and find in the book of Corinthians. Paul comes and says we are. We have this. This, this treasure in the earthen vessel. And we know the vessels in the Old Testament. Was the carrier of oil. Because we didn't have glass bottles. Was the carrier of oil. The carrier of wine. The carrier of of the title date as we see in the book of Jeremiah. Amen. And the vessel was going to be carriers of these things. Amen. And we realize when Paul when Paul was uh, converted God, the angel of the Lord spoke to Ananiah and told Ananiah this man is going to suffer for my name because he's, he's a vessel chosen to bear my name. Amen. So there was a vessel for the name, vessel for the title deed. Vessel for the fire. You remember in the days of Gideon, it was made of clay. Vessel of fire. Vessel of wine. Vessel of oil. Amen. Amen. Vessel were made from the clay for different purposes in the great house. And the Bible says there are many vessels in the great house. Amen. Amen. And he knew how to knead the soil so that the soil can produce what is on the back side of his mind. And sometimes the vessel was not exactly what was on the back side of his mind? So he would take it and break it again. He is going to take Jacob and break Jacob and redo Jacob. 
So that out of Jacob, he becomes Israel. Amen. He is going to take Abraham, redo Abraham, break Abraham. Abraham is going to wait for a promise. The man is on the wheel. God is taking the man on the wheel because he has seen Abraham locked in Abraham. He has seen Israel locked in Jacob. He has seen Paul locked in Saul. He has seen Peter locked in Simon Peter. So the, all this was the lamp of clay. But this man was able to see something trapped inside the clay. And he's going to release it. He is going to free an image. Amen. Amen. He's going to free an image that is found in the clay. Amen. Amen. So if you are the clay, the great port of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is seeing something in you that maybe you've never seen yourself. But now the clay must be malleable. Amen. Amen. When you are going on the wheel today, God wants to produce something that will make you, according to the book of Romans, a vessel of honor in the house. Amen. And if God has made you, maybe the, you are the carrier. Hallelujah. Maybe you are the carrier of the oil. Brother, when you are going to be molded, broken, you say, no. Next time I'll be known by my content. Amen. Amen. I'm not becoming Martin Luther, but what he said was really true. Amen. That you can be judged by the content. Not by the color of your skin. Amen. That if you put some, some milk in the bottle, there is a time when the name of the bottle changes. When someone goes near the bottle, you don't say, you sh uh, you'll knock off the bottle. Say, no, no, no. Be very careful, you'll knock off the milk out. You are now being known by the content. Amen. That when you walk on earth, if you have been filled by the title, did. what defines who you are is the content. And the content is you have now been only washed. You've not only been cleansed, but now there is something that God has deposited in your life. Amen. And if you look in the book of Jeremiah chapter 2, believers, chapter 33, it is, says, take the open evidence of the patches, the 17 shekels, and put in the open, put it, the open evidence and the closed evidence. Amen. We have a pack-up. What was the, the, the closed evidence for? When they had the purchase in the Old Testament, the closed evidence was a pack up of the open evidence. Amen. If the open evidence maybe gets mad, people would go and look for the closed evidence and be able to get the same record that was in the open evidence. Amen. And I want you to realize Adam was an open evidence, but Eve was a sealed evidence. Amen. Jesus Christ is an open evidence, but the bride is a sealed evidence. Amen. If we want the record that was in Jesus, Praise the Lord. Amen. We can go and open the sealed evidence and I've got everything that Christ had. Amen. Because these works shall you do, even greater works than this shall you do. Amen. And the purpose to keep this thing to us, take the open evidence, put in the earthen vessel, for they shall stay there for many days. That was the... You know when you want to keep something? Maybe you've got some money. Maybe there is money in this house. You know the place you want to keep? You are going to consider many things. A place where the thieves cannot break very easily. Sometimes maybe under these tiles in this house, maybe there is a little self and there is money. You may not identify the place. Because I've looked around what really happens. So God tells Jeremiah, take the open evidence, put them in the other vessels. That is the safest place. The evidence of redemption to be put in the other vessel Amen. is the safest Amen. place it can be. Amen. Even they cannot rot. The devil cannot even get it. Amen. Because that vessel, Amen. when it was the clay was mixed, Amen. it was mixed, the roots were re removed. Broken bottles, some unnecessary stones were removed. Roots of bitterness were removed. And then the thing was needed. And it was still wet. But it was exactly... The way it was on the back side of the mind of the potter. The difference was it was not dry. Then it was put in a place for some time. Amen. Amen. Then the firewood is put in the kiln or the oven. No, this is not a persecution. It is going to harden because of what lays ahead. Amen. You must keep the oil and the oil must not leak. Amen. You must be able to have the water and the water must not leak. You must be able to have the evidence put inside of you that someone looking for redemption doesn't have to go to heaven. He can get redemption in the earthen vessel. Someone looking for redemption, looking for forgiveness. He doesn't have to go anywhere because the portal produced something that can keep. Is that who you are today? 
Are you the kind of person that God can entrust through the fiery trials that have come your way to produce an earthen vessel that God can say, Adam lost the book, but I've got a vessel down here that I can take the evidence of redemption and sail inside of them. Amen. That when I'm broken, what is found out of me is the voices of redemption, is the evidence that something has been purchased. Where is God going to put the title date that we see coming down and all of us know that what came down in Revelation 10 was the title deed to eternal life. Amen. The title deed that Adam lost. God is not going to take it to the same place. There must be reinforcement. There must be a fire. Amen. There must be a reinforcement to the keeper, the custodian, Amen. the steward of this other, of this title deed. Amen. That's how serious our redemption is. Amen. We are looking at you from the scriptures. And showing that the scripture, God must have had a lot of trust. When he say, when Paul comes and says, we have got these treasures in the earthen vessel. It has been molded according to the image on the backside. It has been made because there is a fire. After the water, amen, maybe water baptism, you are now going into a fire time. And the fire time is because this man knows this one is a first flower in my house. This one is to keep. I know each one of you want to say, I think I'm the vessel of honor. What honor? Is the honor of the wine, the honor of the oil, or the honor of the title deed that has returned to the earth? That when the devil sees the title deed, he fears. Because this might be, a, a, this might be an earthen vessel, but inside of it, it has sustained. It has been tried and tempted, but the purpose is to harden it. To make it Amen. something that will not break. Amen. Because something is going to be deposited inside. Amen. That's a purpose. Amen. That's a purpose we came here on the earth and vessel. So that God can reproduce himself and put the record right there. Now according to the scriptures all we've read. Moses is being taken in heaven. Are you ready? You can go together with the scriptures. When Moses is being taken in heaven he's told. Come up here. I want you to make what you've seen here. Go and reproduce it down here on earth. Down there on earth. And Moses is saying, yes, I'm going to do that. But he's saying, tell the people, each one of them, to give their offerings freely. God is saying, I've wanted to dwell among the people. But the people have what it takes to bring me down. Amen. You realize in Exodus 25, God has communicated something he's never said before. He's saying, I want to dwell among them. Oh God. Amen. It is like God wants to be Jehovah Shammah. Amen. The name of the city shall be, the Lord is there. Amen. But before God gets into that place, there is one thing he wants. He wants people to produce the material that has got power to pull him down. Amen. Can we read that scripture again? Amen. Leviticus 25. Verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So some scriptures can be very confusing. So Moses has had a vision, amen? amen? What is the vision all about? To bring God down. And he's saying, the material that will bring me down is not going to come from heaven. It's among the people. Amen. When they were coming out of Egypt, I told them, each one of you, go and get gold, go and get silver. Then I'm demanding you to bring it so that I can dwell among you. Amen. So Moses goes up and he sees a vision. When he sees a vision, he started seeing, he says, I see something in the, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm seeing in the first God, what have I seen? I've seen the brass and altar. Oh, from the brass and altar, there are so many cubits from that to the brass and lever. Okay. Then I've also seen that one has finished the first God. 
Then I'm going to the second one. I'm saying there are 12 loaves of few bread that must be changed every Sabbath. And I can see seven golden candlesticks. I finished the first, second court. Then I want to enter in the Holy of Holies. Then I'm seeing at the entrance of the Holy of Holies, I'm seeing a curtain. But before that, there is the altar of incense. I don't see blood there. I've seen blood on the other side. Then I'm going beyond the Holy of Holies. I'm seeing the Ark of the Covenant. I'm seeing the cherubims. Oh, God. Then inside, I'm seeing there is the two tablets of stone and the scroll and the hidden man. That's what you saw before these things were reproduced. The hidden man that was in heaven came down here. Amen. And I've seen it. There is a hidden man and I've also seen the almond stick of Aaron. They're all here. I've seen seven stages before someone comes to meet God. The brass and altar. The brass and lever is two. The altar of incense. We before that, the brass and altar. The brass and lever. Amen? The shoe bread. The seven golden candlesticks. The altar of incense. The mercy seat. And the ark. Seven. Amen. So that someone was supposed to go through these seven to be able to meet God. Amen. Someone who has come to the brass and altar has not met God. And then God is telling Moses, you see what you saw in heaven. Take it down. Amen. Oh God. Amen. But the Bible is telling us in the book of Hebrews. The Bible is telling us. The book of Hebrews. Those who are the patterns of heaven. Amen. And then there is heaven itself. Amen. Oh guys stay with me. Amen. Maybe I'm talking to the heaven itself. Amen. Someone is saying you are going ahead of yourself. <laughs> because Exod, uh, uh, Hebrews is saying. These patterns, according to the book of uh, Hebrews 8, were cleansed and purified by this. But by, by the heaven themselves, now let's read it, by a better sacrifice. So that heaven is not Jesus. Because Jesus does not need to be purified. Amen. Let's read together with you Hebrews. Where did we get that? Is that we, 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 Hebrews 9? Hebrews 9. After the water, after the blood, after the oil. Oil is not recorded here. Oil is recorded in Exodus 40 verse 9. But Paul has picked blood and water here for the vessels. And then he says it was therefore necessary. Amen? That the patterns of the things in the heaven, the pattern that Moses was told to make, in the heaven should be purified with this. What is that? Blood, water, and oil. But the heavenly things themselves with a better sacrifice than this. Amen. 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 So Paul here is not dealing with the temple. He is dealing with the tabernacle. Amen. There was the vision of the tabernacle and the vision of the temple. Amen. Now can we go together? Let's go to the book of 2 Chronicle chapter 28. Verse 12. 2 Chronicle chapter 28 verse 12. You know those are some of the books people don't read so much because it is and so and so gave birth to so and so. And those are very important things because God is sometimes emphasizing names. We had a talk, we are talking with Brother Brown and Godfrey uh, and the question was which why? Who, uh, where did Cain find his wife? The answer that we were looking at is no different from your answer. You know what your answer is? Cain married one of his sisters. But when you go to the Bible, it will tell you, mm, Cain even married even before Adam and Eve had sons and daughters. You are quiet because I'm giving you an assignment. <laughs> because when Cain killed Abel, there was, no any other, there was no other person on earth. And Abraham lived 130 years. And God who? Seth. And after Seth was born, 
Then Adam got sons and daughters. But before that, Cain was already married. Thank you. Can hear somebody say, you want to say you must have married from the family of the serpent? Think about it. Think about it. Because the serpent wasn't a snake as the way you think. It was walking. And the serpent had a seed that could mix. The male serpent had a seed that could mix. And the female serpent had a womb that could receive. Did you get what I'm saying? You know, when you love scriptures, it's very interesting. You say, this man goes to Nota and he, the Bible says he's married. And Adam doesn't have a child. Then Seth, because there was no child born between Abel and Seth, no child was born. Amen? Amen. 130 years is now when Seth is born. But the man Cain has already married. So, if you would say, that's what you are asking. If you want to say Cain, the serpent seed, married the daughter of Adam, what are you trying to make God to be? So that the wife of Cain is going to be destroyed. A daughter of a holy Adam? He's going to get married to the serpent seed and God is not saying anything about it? Thank you. Can you give him a hand clap? Sometimes when you focus on the scriptures, it's something else. Okay. Brother Godfrey, you will say we shall revisit? First Chronicle 28 verse 12. Is it? Is it first or second? Is it? It should be first Chronicles, not second. First Chronicles. Really? Yeah, that is it. Verse 12. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the house thereof and of the treasury thereof and of the upper chamber thereof and of the inner palace thereof and the place of the mercy seat and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit. He gave it to who? To Solomon. So we see David received a pattern by the spirit. Moses received a pattern by the Spirit. So we have got two patterns on earth. The pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the temple. Are we together so far? Amen. So Moses is going to get the pattern of the tabernacle. But this man, David, is receiving the pattern of the temple. But we must get to a place where the pattern of the temple... And the pattern of the, the, the tabernacle melts into one vision. Amen. And that's what's going to, going to show if this person is going to build, he must receive a vision of the pattern to build it. Now that puts a preacher on a tight place. Because he's not going to tell the people his stories. He's supposed to get the transmission of the dimension and the measurement. Amen. And he's supposed to reproduce that on earth. Amen. That God is going to follow that and live Amen. among the people. Amen. The problem is not the clay. No. The problem is that people are supposed to work on the clay. To produce the invisible image of, of the porter. Amen. So that it can be filled. Did you get that? Sometimes it is not the gold. But the problem is there is no Aholiab and Bezalel to make the Holy of Holies that God can come and stand between the cherubims and say, I spoke to you in uh, Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus. But in the book of Leviticus, because you fulfill the specification, I'm speaking to you from the cherubim, I followed the pattern. The pattern has come down. Amen? Amen? And then this pattern is coming down. The Bible is telling us the heavenly patterns were supposed to be cleansed by the oil, I mean by, by the blood, by the, by the water, but the heaven itself to be cleansed by or be purified by a better sacrifice. So each one of you understand that was not the Lord Jesus. 
Which this kind of heaven is it that is going to be purified by a better sacrifice? Is there a better sacrifice than the Lord Jesus Christ's blood? No. Or if that blood is there to sanctify the people, it is going to sanctify the people that God will come down and follow the pattern that was on the backside of the mind of God. Amen. I don't know if you've thought about this. That Paul talked much about the tabernacle than he did the temple. Amen? When you go in the book of Hebrews, you find Paul is dealing with the tabernacle, tabernacle, tabernacle. But he's not giving specification of the temple. Because the temple is the church. The tabernacle is Jesus Christ. Amen. The tabernacle is Christ. The temple is the church. And the temple didn't, uh, the, the tabernacle was not taken in captivity. It was never destroyed. But the temple was. But the temple came from the tabernacle. Amen. Not the tabernacle from the temple. Because Eve came from Adam. Not Adam from Eve. So the temple here is just a magnified tabernacle. Where they had a brass and altar, where they, they had a brass and lever, one washing place, in the temple we have got now 12 oxen carrying a big basin on their back. Amen? Amen? So we have got three facing north, three facing east, three facing south, and three facing west. And on top of it is a big basin for the priest to wash. And I was wondering why it wasn't on the back of the eagle. Or on the back of the lion. Or the ark on the back of a man. But it's on the back of the ox. The, amen. amen. It is where we are getting the washing. Amen. amen. It is where the water is because there is an inner cleansing amen. inside the tabernacle. Amen. It is not outside. Amen. There was the first initial cleansing. That takes place in your life while you are now being initiated into the priesthood. Amen. But God said between the brass and lever and the brass and altar. Between the brass and altar after the brass and altar. I will put the brass and lever for the water for the people to wash. Amen. To wash their feet and wash their hands. Then Simon Peter Jesus Christ comes and says you I want to wash your, your feet. Simon Peter says you can't wash me. Then Jesus says, if I can't wash me, wash you, you have no part in me. Then Simon Peter says, no, if you want to wash my feet, wash I ought to, even the face. Are. Then Jesus said, no, he that is clean Amen. does not need to bathe but to wash his feet. Amen. This was another washing of the people that have already heard the word. Amen. And that's why he said you are clean by the word you've heard. Amen. It had to take a vessel from heaven called the brass and lever. Because Moses was told, tell the priest to watch every time they come in the tabernacle, lest they die. So there was a vessel to keep you alive by visiting it over and over and over again. You can't say, I was saved. I was watched. No, you have to visit that place. Or else you will die. This was a death between the brass and altar and the brass and lever. It was a death between Calvary. After you've already accepted Calvary, you could still die because you did not visit the washing. Constant washing that is found in the tabernacle. The constant washing that is found in the word. And that becomes hard because people say, I'm saved, I don't make mistakes. Then you are having Jesus on the mercy seat for no reason at all. He is there because there is a work he has to do. Then make it according to the pattern that you saw in heaven. Oh my God. I'm even finished. Make it according to the pattern you saw in heaven. You want to say a person is coming down to the earth to feed his pattern, not to join a church, not to obey the pastor, but he's obeying the pastor because there is a measurement there is specification. Amen. There is a way that you must get to. Amen. Are you the heavenly pattern? Amen. Then God is producing these things. When he's producing these things, he's taking a man by the name Paul. And Paul is going in the third heaven. And when he goes into that heaven, he did not see, he did not say, I saw brass. 
Even there is no place where Moses said, I saw brass. He was making it to represent. But the vessels are people. Amen. The vessels are people. Amen. When you leave, you have to realize maybe God has made me the brass and altar to receive sacrifice. Amen. May my friend, my level of forgiveness will be higher. Because I'm a brass and altar in the temple. Amen. Amen. I don't know what I'm saying. Maybe I'm a brass and lever. When people visit me, they go away clean. Amen. Make it according to the pattern in heaven. Amen. And then the man goes there, calls Paul. And he says, when I went to heaven, I saw things that are not permitted for a man to speak. Not because he didn't say, he didn't see them. Like most of the message believers, they think, Brother Branham said something Paul never saw. Then you are not following the Bible. Paul is the one in his first letter, the Thessalonians, said, the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, the voice, and the trump of God. Out of that, the prophet comes to bring the message, the rapture. Where did he get it? These are the truth we are laying in the Bible. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Amen. He went into heaven and he saw things. Oh, I'm asking you, did he see you? Amen. Did he see things? Amen. Because he said, I saw things in heaven. Amen. And the Moses was told, make according to the pattern you saw. Amen. And then the Bible said, these things were, these things Amen. were purified by this. Amen. But the heavenly things. Amen. And Paul said, I saw things. Amen. When Paul saw things, then he can descend and make it according to, oh my God, if Paul saw me, he must have taken my dimension. And then he's preach, bringing it in the preaching of the word. And the other part that is not me is being cut off. Cut off so that I feed the pastor's word. No! So that I feed my spiritual body in heaven. Our body eternal in heaven. Let us read together with you in the book of uh, First Corinthians. First Corinthians 15. My message is made according to the heavenly pattern. Amen. And I told Brother Godfrey this morning. If Christians will get that is your pattern that makes a preacher not to sleep. It's a pattern that makes a preacher to study. That makes him to pray and fast. To reproduce it on earth. You would not want to be policed here and there. You would want to say, God, I want to be the way I was seen in heaven. Amen. Amen. How are you seen in heaven? Before we go there, let's go to this scripture here. Matthew 18.10. It says, Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. There is no something else. There is no literal brass in heaven. But there is an angel in heaven of the people down here on earth. Let, let's interpret that scripture again with the Paul. Paul 15, uh, Paul 2nd, uh, 1 uh, Corinthians should be. 1 Corinthians 15, yes, 1 Corinthians 15. Forty-seven. Verse 46 says, How be that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and after, afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, Afi. Second man is the Lord from heaven. Amen. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Amen. The second man of your first man is the Lord himself. Am I saying something? Yeah. We said God created man in his image. But later on that image fall, fell. Then God is going to do this. I'll be God in the image of a man. Not man in the image of God. But God in the image of a man. That one can never fail. Amen. And then the Bible says. The first man is of the earth as he. The second man. The second birth. The second vessel. In the hand of the porter. The man is Christ. He's a new creation. He has been redone. Amen. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As the Afi, such are they also that are Afi. Are you Afi? Not so much. 
As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. There are people who are heavenly too. Those are the heavenly things. And these things need a better sacrifice to connect them. Because the blood is going to produce the life. And the life is going to be the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to come to the seed. And the seed is going to produce the image. And because the image is down here, it's because in heaven there is a word body. On earth is a word image. Inside the soul is the word seed. I repeat three things. Word seed, word image, and word body. You cannot fail to be the word image here. Because in heaven you are a word body. Are you connecting 1 Corinthians 5? If this earthly tabernacle, we have another one eternal in heaven. And then he says, As the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as the heaven, such are they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. My friend, if he's calling your earth, your image, then that's not you. If he's calling the heavenly an image, then that's not you. So you must look for yourself somewhere. Amen. If the person that is seated before me is not him, it's the image of him. And then the one said there is an earthly, there is a heavenly tabernacle. It's not you because you can't be your own house. You live in your house. So who is you? You are the seed Amen. that came from the loins of God with the two images. The earthly image and the heavenly image. And if you are born the earthly image, you must bear the heavenly image. Amen. And for you to bear the heavenly image, there must be a birth between the earthly image and the heavenly image. Amen. The new birth comes between the celestial and the terrestrial. Amen. Let me see. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Man, the thing Paul is dealing with here, if you go to verse 39, he says, All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of a flesh, man, another flesh, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another birds. Do you know how this man is going to put on life? Going into animal life? These are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun. And he's talking about celestial and terrestrial. And then he's saying you. This is the time to wear the earthy image. And the earthy image is not an unbeliever. The earthy image it is God in the flesh of a human being. He is a God, a man here that is controlled by an unseen world. Amen. Because this man has to fit a pattern. Amen. Amen. If something goes wrong, this person is not supposed to be one and one there. He is supposed to be, this man is toiling to reproduce a vision of me. Amen. We have qualification of ministers according to the standards. But I want to tell you, if I had a minister that is connected to the real transmission... He's getting the wiring of who I am. And he's speaking things. And I've got these things on my shoulder. And the message is saying remove it because I've seen you. You don't look like what I'm seeing down here. You look better than what I'm seeing right now. You have to remove that. Because the vision of the tabernacle has come down. The vision of the temple has come down. And God has no reason of staying out there. He has to descend because the heavenly pattern has come down. Is that true? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Paul goes up in the heaven, he says, I had things that is not permitted for a man. But sometimes you go to the scriptures to find out mm, what are the things that Paul saw. Then he comes, he says, if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have others in heaven. And in these we groan we have borne the word here. Now let me say this. When someone comes to the earth, you come with a deposit of God. Amen. And that deposit of God is the gene of God. Amen. It comes and gets locked inside your soul. Amen. It's right there. It's waiting to be bathed into the image of itself. Amen. Because when you have got a maize seed, a maize, a corn, 
you have got everything that is in the maze. Amen. But Amen. man, you have to plant it to stretch Amen. it from Amen. the seed Amen. to the fruit. Amen. Then inside the fruit, you will find the seed again. Amen. You, you are stretching the journey. Amen. So I came back, I came from God and I'm going back to God. But I'm not going back to God as a seed. I must be planted and then I stretch myself. Amen. From the seed, I'm going. Amen. I'm going from the seed. Amen. And I'm going to bear all the character characteristics found in the seed. Mm. I'm not going to get something outside of myself. I'm going to get anything, everything. Brother Philemon, mm. I'm going to get everything right from the seed. Mm. I'm going, uh, inside the seed, virtue is locked. Mm. Inside the seed, faith is locked. Mm. Inside the seed, patience is locked. Mm. Inside the seed, healing is locked. Mm. Inside the seed, redemption is locked. Mm. Inside the seed, reconciliation is in there. Mm. But once I get a leak, once I get something from outside to open that seed, Amen. then I will manifest all the potential. Amen. And that thing is going to come from who? One called Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ becomes the quickening power. Amen. But inside my seed is the transforming power. So you have got a power in you and there is a power in him. So it's a connection of the two powers. So that the seed, <laughs> hallelujah, the seed in you can begin the journey to what it has always been. Amen. The maize, when it has been planted, it does not get when it's about two months, it becomes kumawiki. Okay. And then another time it becomes, uh, let me see, managu. Okay. And then shortly before it matures, it's maize. Never! Okay. The seed, when it's planted, has got all the stages of the maize seed. Amen. It is from the seed I come Amen. to the seed I'm going. Amen. So the child of God was a child of God. You are seed of God. Amen. But I want to tell you there is a pattern in heaven that feeds you here on earth. Amen. And the reason why you've not gone is because you've not fully seen your pattern. Amen. You've not fully seen how you look like. Amen. But Paul says in the book of Corinthians, And that day I shall know as I am known. And that becomes my security as a Christian. Amen. That I'm not here because I'm in this church because I love the pastor. Maybe that's a part of it. Not because I love the way they sing. That's a part of it. You people sing properly that people can come loving the song. But let them, that, let us tell them the greatest thing is, may thy will in heaven be done on earth. May the way I was, being, I was in heaven, I want to walk on earth the way I was in heaven. Job is asked a question. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? And the sons of God shouted for joy. Amen. Before there was a molecule to make this, I was. Amen. God came and brought me down here. Amen. Amen. When we go to... I mean, what are you praying for the pastor for? What are you praying for the preacher for? The preacher is not going to make you according to what he sees. And that's why we don't, so once in a while we will do that. But you don't visit homes to see how they cook and then make a salmon. You don't visit the people to see how they live and then make a salmon. No, I would rather stay on my knees. Amen. That God can transmit to me the spiritual pattern. Amen. Amen. That I can produce the pattern that has been communicated to me by the Spirit. Amen. Oh, brother, that's what you want. Amen. Don't, this man, David, looks at Solomon. He looks at Amnon. Maybe Amnon was dead. Absalom was dead. Adonijah. He looked at these guys and mm, I wanted to give someone a pattern of the dwelling place of God. Absalom, nah. Adonijah, no. I'm giving to Solomon. Amen. Then Solomon asks the wisdom. Amen. Then Solomon is going to follow the pattern. You would love it if Solomon was a pastor. Then Solomon is not doing it just because he loved you more than he did the next person. He is doing it because there is a pattern. Oh, when I close my eyes, I see the pattern. Amen. When Michelangelo was trying to make Moses, he saw a pattern. It was on the backside of his mind. And he looked at the marble stone and he saw Moses dropped in the marble stone. Then he took a chisel like a pastor would do, like a minister would do, like an evangelist would do, and started chopping off things. You must feed what is on the backside. Amen. You must feed. Amen. And there is a time he's taking a big hammer and this one, here Moses is way deep. 
I'm going to take a big hammer and knock this off and knock that one off. But now the image is now, amen. And I can see Michelangelo rejoicing and say, yeah, 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 it is coming close. I can see the eyes according to the vision on the backside. I can see the lips of Michelangelo. He's saying, wow, this thing is coming. Now the vision is going to become an image. It was trapped inside the, sky, the, 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 the map of stone. He's going to produce it. God, when he saw you, he saw an image of himself trapped in the clay. Trapped, but must be liberated. Amen. Amen. We need someone with a hammer. Hammer the whole thing that I know is necessary. Remove them out. Take them out because there is a measurement. Eh? Yeah, we are going to somewhere. Let me look at my time here. Yeah, it's good. I've got a few minutes here. Um, you are walking on earth because there is a pattern in heaven. Amen. Did you get that clearly? Amen. Now, this man that comes and tells you, God gave, even if you see your pattern, even if a man comes to tell you, don't go into the rapture, you don't go to the rapture. You'll just be as happy as if he has told you nothing. I mean, there is a pattern in heaven. There is a template from which I'm being reproduced day by day by day. I'm becoming more the way I was, the way the Father saw me. God did not save the people. He never produced people on earth. And then like the people would say, you see the way Jesus Christ died. And then you go and watch the passion of Christ. And then you cry. That is not what is making Christianity. You can still cry and there is nothing to respond to. But I want to tell you the woman at the well. The woman at the well. That was some clay right there. And then the porter came there. And then the porter started traveling. And then he arrested her. He started from the outside. Give me water. The woman said, um, you being a Samaritan, would you ask for water from me? And then Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew not the charisma, if you knew the doria, ungejua kipawa cha mungu, si ungejua karama. Those words are different. Jesus is standing as the gift. Knows as the nine gifts. Amen? Amen. You would, and then you would know who's talking to you. You would ask him for water. Amen. Because he needs must go to Samaria to find a Samaritan woman. Amen. Because the Samaritan woman has been on the wheel. Amen. And then he wants to produce something that was on the backside. Amen. Then this woman, the moment she get, captures that, nothing will shake this woman. The woman is empowered because someone has projected an image of how the father knew her. The father has never known her as a drunkard, as a prostitute. No! The father knows us as the genes. There was a woman in the Bible called Tamar. And the Tamar was laboring to bring him down. And she went and put on the garment of hollow tree. And then she ended the garment. She ended the garment of hollow. But she was not a hollow. Oh man! But the garment made her look like a hollow. But she wasn't a hollow. She came there and captured the seed from Judah. She brought him down. She brought the lineage down. You need to bring the lineage. That's the purpose we are here. Continue the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue the holy lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, it's not hard. There is a pattern for you. It's not hard. It's not you trying. You are only fitting in. Then Judah, Judah had come secretly. God bless you, brother Judah. When Judah came secretly, then there was a, an invisible union. Listen, there was a secret union between Tamar and Judah. And then Judah, he said, I'm going to come back to bring a kid. When he comes, he asks boldly, where was the harlot that was seated here? <laughs> the sin has changed. And they say, there has never been a harlot here. Where was the drunkard that was here? Where was the gambler that was here? The testimony is there has never been. Looking for something. I've never been a sinner. Amen. Looking for her. A Hallison? No, no, no. You, you say you came here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were here a while ago and there was Hallison. No, no, no. You, these, these places are never. There are never sinners here. But the garment. 
When the woman went home, she took that garment of hollow tree. She took it aside. Amen. Put on, she put back the garment of innocence. Amen. There's never been a hallowed here. Amen. I want you to know by your image. Amen. Know by your really you. Amen. And even I talk about image, not the really you. The really you is the seed. But if you look even at the image, which is the theophany, it has no flaws. Now I want to tell you, believers, if you're listening to this message, you're listening to something great. Amen. That today I'm not going to walk according to what so-and-so thinks. I'm going to walk according to the, my pattern, Amen. the template, Amen. how I was. Amen. I'm telling you, you will win every battle. Amen. And sometimes God is throwing on the wheel. Amen. Then they tell Judah, your daughter-in-law has committed adultery. Then you just say, bring her that she could be stored. And then the woman comes. When this woman is coming, she has got the staff that was missing for three months. That Judah never told his brother where his staff went. <laughs> and then his bracelet, the womb is in possession of a woman. Because when he came secretly, the woman knew what to pick from him. I want to pick the staff. The staff is his rank. Amen. And I want to pick his signet. I want to pick his authority. And signet from which you get the name signature has the name. I want to have it. They want to have his wax. The bracelet. I want to have it. And not only that, I want to have the seed. So when they come here, you've committed adultery. This pastor had fastened the church in barrenness. Some pastors are like Judah. And other pastors are like Manoah. The woman is really good. She gets transmission and vision. The man doesn't even know. Until when God comes and receives the sacrifice, the man does not know. Once your sacrifice has been received, you cannot be killed. He's telling the wife, I think God is going to kill us. Then the wife is telling, no, if he was to kill us, he wouldn't have received the sacrifice. Amen. Some churches are like Manoah and his wife. Others are like Abraham and his wife. Others are like David and his wife. And others are Jude and his wife. No, and Tamar. Then they're bringing this woman called Tamar to destroy her. <laughs> Judah is even hiding his secret coming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It is only Tama that knew that Judah had come. Amen. No other person understood. Amen. 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 Only Tama knew that Judah has walked here. Amen. On his way to share their sheep. Amen. On his way to Israel. Amen. He walks around the, among the Gentiles. Amen. Because he has the seed Amen. that must not go, that must remain here. And there is a womb ready to capture the seed to continue the lineage of Jesus. Amen. And say, she has not to give her testimony or else she'll be banned. Give your testimony of the secret coming of Judah. Amen. 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 Her life depended on the testimony whether when he came, she united with him. And when he came, she united with him secretly and no one knew it. Amen. And he was still in that garment of hollow tree. This flesh was still in the flesh when she united with him. Do you understand? Did you understand what I said? She was in the flesh when she united with him. The garment of hollow tree. And then bring her she be born. Then she comes. She produced the bracelet. Judah is like, ah, no, I can contest that. Produce the stuff. Because Judah was contesting the seed. Mm. But then she produced the signet that had the name Judah. Oh. And then they say, who's these things? Can I see who? Can somebody come up? <laughs> and on the signet, the bracelet and the stuff. Because that person, let him not tell you I'm this man. That person is the owner of the seed. Tama, do you mean you want to tell us Judah came here secretly and we never saw him? That's really true. Amen. Is here? Can you ask him? Judah, were you here? 
We thought this is the first time you have come. We thought this is the first time you have come. He said, no. What did she say? It is true I came. And I entered into a union with this woman. To continue the life of Jesus Christ. You are here, yes. The spirit and the bride say, come. They are saying the same thing. Then Judah spoke and says, he is more righteous than I am. What are the word righteous that means? Zikenu. He is now coming to declare Amen. that you've never sinned. You've never been a sinner. Amen. When those people say there has never been a hallowed here, Amen. they were right. Amen. They say there has never been a hallowed. Amen. And I'm also standing to say, I have never been a sinner. Amen. Now you had better believe what I'm telling you. Amen. If there is something you've done that makes the devil to pull you down, tell the devil, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Amen. That thing you caused me to, I'm going to remove it. Amen. Not because you want me. Amen. Not because the pastor wants me. But it is because there is a pattern. Amen. I'm going, I've been made, I go to the pattern that was seen in heaven. Amen. Paul saw Amen. people. Did he see you? Praise the Lord, I want to read our last scripture. Did he see you? Were you seen in heaven? The, how are you behaving like you don't exist anywhere else? Why do you behave like you are the only one we are seeing? But that's not when we read in the Bible, we don't see that. When we read in the Bible, we see Paul saying, people have got bodies eternal. Amen. When we read in 1 Peter 1, 4, it says there is an inheritance, incorruptible, reserved in heaven, eternal in heaven. Amen. I see he's saying there is an inheritance. Paul is calling it a body. Jesus is saying, do not despise these ones for their angels. Behold the face of the Father that is in heaven. Amen. Now, if my angel behold the face of the Father, then there must be a time and a season for me down here to behold the same Father so that we can be in the same harmony with my angel in heaven. Amen. We are believing the testimony of angels. And the angel I'm talking about are not just servants. It's a part of me in an angelic body. Amen. And I'm declaring today that you are eternal. Amen. That you are supernatural that came down to experience humanity. Amen. You are not your human being experiencing supernatural life. Amen. But you are supernatural at the beginning. That's came down to the earth. And then you are declaring who you are. Amen. You are a child of God. Let's go to the book of Revelation. I want us to finish somewhere. Make it according to the patterns in heaven. Then in a man in an age goes. Then he says, I'm seeing myself on my bed. And I see myself with my hands on the back side. And just one meter away. When I see myself, I sing in my little bedroom. There are many millions and millions of the message that they, they believe us. And I said, this brown. I'm saying, no, they're not brown. They, you are converted to Christ. Then I saw these people say that another one comes and hugs me. And says, precious brother. He said, did you identify? I said, no, I couldn't. He said, that one there. You led her to Christ when she was 90 years. What did he lead to Christ? The theophany? No. The seed that was in that body had left the body and entered into another body. Amen. But she still bore the heavenly image. And Brother Branham was seeing the heavenly image for the first time. Then he says, I saw all of you there. Amen. That was Nadis Christi. Yeah. Then he comes down the stage of a perfect man. Yeah. Now being according to the pattern you saw in heaven. Yeah. Then we have got the faithful servants, faithful ministers yeah. who are teaching the scriptures. God hands over the pattern by the spirit to your pastor. Yeah. To your evangelist. Yeah. To your apostle. Yeah. He's going to produce an image. Yeah. The wisdom of Aholiab and Bezalel is coming. Now I want to say this. If the heaven, the patterns of heaven came down and God followed. My question to you. What about when the heaven itself descends? Will God remain? And I'm saying the heaven itself to me. It is you. Amen. When you get born again, you are the heaven itself. Amen. 
If the pattern duplicates would bring God down, what about you? Praise the Lord. Think about this a while. That if gold and silver just placed in the right place produce an image, and then God came. And you that is saved in a church that is following God, how is your prayer going to be today in the evening? Because we still feel we got saved by grace. But when you have to receive something from God, we receive it by works. You are misplacing the word. You are saved by grace. And some of us have got a problem of accepting it. You would rather believe what you know about yourself and fail to believe what God says about you. I want to say this. What came to Abraham in Genesis 18? Do you know what came to, came to Abraham in Genesis 18 was a part of heaven? Let me not go in the book of Ezekiel to see those things. What came to Abraham in Genesis 18? Before there was two cherubims, <laughs> before two cherubims, I've got something behind that. I wish I could demonstrate just on top of your sister there, but no problem. The Ark of the Covenant. Just give me that thing there. Yeah, that one. Thank you. So when Moses went to heaven and he saw the ark, did he see cherubims made of gold? Or these were, let me, let me give you something. Cherubims were made. The first time the word cherubims is mentioned is when they were guarding the tree of life. And they were not from gold. They were people, guardians. If you go in the book of Ezekiel, Satan was also called the covering cherub. Okay, so if Moses, listen, if Moses was told, make the cherubims. This one is not exactly right because they are supposed to be intertwined in the middle, right? Make the two cherubims. Then when God descended, the glory of the Lord came and filled the tabernacle. Then God went past the present altar, present lever, and entered and stood between the cherubims. This was now called the Shekinah glory, speaking to the children of Israel. That was way after God had come down to Abraham, Gabriel this way, Michael this way, and God in the middle. So what came to Abraham, this is what was called the Holy of Holies. What came to Abraham was the holy of holies. Amen. What came to Peter, James, and John on man transliteration was the holy of holies. Amen. This time it was Jesus in the middle, Moses, and Elijah. Amen. In the book of Mark, when the disciples went, is it Mark or John, to the grave, one of the gospels say there was one angel, but another gospel say there was one angel at the feet of the body and the other angel at the head. And the body that was in between had been taken. In the book of Acts chapter 1, when Jesus Christ was taken, there were two angels standing right there. Now, it goes to show, if this thing had to come down, it goes to show every part of the tabernacle comes down. Amen. Do you understand I'm saying you are the vessels? Amen. Because if Moses saw the seven golden candlesticks, and in the book of Revelation, the golden candlesticks are called churches. Mm -hmm. The light, there were the stars, mm -hmm. and there were people. So if the golden candlesticks in the Old Testament were people, mm -hmm. and then the cherubims were people, mm -hmm. how can you be a vessel in heaven if it was not a person in heaven? And do you understand that the book of Revelation chapter 2 begins with the candlesticks? If you understand the tabernacle very well, the candlesticks begins in the second court. So the question is, brass and altar, where was it? Brass and altar was Calvary. Amen? Amen? And then in the day of Pentecost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost came and lit the candlesticks. The same fire that came from the altar where the sacrifice was done, Amen. where the burnt offering was done. It's the same fire that came to lead 
the candlesticks. It's the same fire that takes the prayer into the Holy of Holies. Now, if the pattern have to come down, could it be believers that we are the heavenly pattern, that in us we've received something that makes us walk on two feet? But yet behind this flesh I'm seeing, behind the clay I'm seeing, there is a treasure. Could this be the thing? Now, brother, is that really true for you? I want to say, why do you want to judge yourself based on what you are, where you were born, what you've gone through? When there is another part of you that is saying, what has that? What did you do? I would want to give you two witnesses that have never done what you've done. And they all pertain to you. One is the seed. The other one is the theophany. These two have never done the things you are saying you've done. Yes. Say amen if that's true. Amen. The gene of who you are has never done what you've done in this amen. flesh. The theophany has never done what you've done in this flesh. Amen. And you have got two witnesses. The seed says you are never a sinner. The theophany says you are never a sinner. And you want to accept the testimony of this flesh. No. Say no to the testimony of the flesh. No. I know as I'm known. And as we are holding this glory, we are changed from image to image according to the spirit of the Lord. Amen. There is a pattern for you in heaven. Amen. And that is what the preacher is supposed to be preaching today. Amen. To make the people say there is something. Let's go to our last scripture. Your time remaining. Our scripture here I want to read. No, I want to call three scriptures, one scripture. Stay in Ezekiel 40, chapter 3, and stay in Revelation 11, 1, and Revelation 21, 15. I'm going to finish there. And there was given me a reed, like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. And the altar and them that worship therein. It is now not only talking about the pattern. It is now talking about measurement. If you go to Exodus 26. It will tell you and the curtains measure them this way. Everything had a measurement. You can't be a believer. A Christian without measurement. And that's why people see sisters putting on decent long dresses. They say these people are war. We are telling you, oh, before war came, war came the other day. We had already been given the measurement. Amen. A husband is measured. A wife is measured. Amen. A believer has measurement. Yes. Because everything in the house of God is measured. Amen. Even the ark of the covenant was measured. Amen. The ark of Noah was measured. Amen. The curtain was measured. Go read uh, Exodus 26. You see every measurement. And then he says here, but the court which is without the temple, leave it out and measure it not. There are things that are not measured. Brother Morano, we have someone by the name Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel in uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 has what he called the blamet or the plum bob. That is supposed to measure what? The perpendicular. He's supposed to measure how straight the wall is. And if that plummet does not declare you're straight, you need to be destroyed so that we can build again according to the vision. Amen. Zerubbabel has got a plummet. And sometimes people don't have plummet in their Christianity because you've not made and have a contact on the really you. The Bible says, uh, it's just coming in my mind here. It says, and David measured the Moabites. He measured them <laughs> with a line. Those to die and those to live. He measured them. It's in the book of Samuel. David looked at the people and he measured them. We are finishing. Let's not go there. The temple was measured and the people in. But there is a part of the temple that God never needed. He said, let it be, tro be trodden down for 42 months, three and a half years. There is a part that is not measured. Whatever that God needs in his house, 
has measurements, mm -hmm. has specifications, mm -hmm. has dimension. Mm -hmm. He came down and told in, in the book of Daniel 5, you have been weighed. Mm -hmm. You have to be weighed on balances mm -hmm. of the word. You have to be measured, not according to the measure. He was given a read. What is your read in your life? Praise the Lord. Yeah, when we say the word, it looks more general, isn't it? But when you say a measurement of who you are up there, is the thing that's going to measure you. Amen. You have to feed that. Amen. Everything in the temple is measured. The temple was measured, and the Bible says, and those that were in the temple. Did you notice the person that gives John the read is the same one that gave him the book? Amen. So you can't have the book, and you don't have the measurement. Eh? When you saw your name, you must have the measurement of who you are. Now, this is different. Jesus said you cannot even add one stature to your hair. Now, let us care about your stature. You can't. It's who you are. I want to show you some of the things here. Maybe I'm going to refer. Ezekiel 40, chapter 3, chapter, uh, Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 3 says, and there was a man with a measuring reed, and he stood at the gate. <laughs> he stood at the gate. Tunapima kama unatoshana. Mechukua yo measurement ya kila moja wenu. Every measurement of who you are. And I'm bringing it here at the gate. He does not only stand the gate. He has got the measurement. And the people who get in, I know the people say, no. Ini kidogo tu wacha. Si kidogo. How are you going to feed that body in there? If the word image in you does not correspond to the word body out there. These things have to say the same thing. You have to be weighed. Because Jeremiah 32 talks about the weighing of the shekels. Redemption in the house of God has a measure. Amen? Amen. Prayer has a measure. Intercession has a measure. There was this woman, the prophet had talked about her. This woman was dying, and she was a Christian. In the message, Dr. Moses, or uh, African Truth Report, she was dying on bed. When she, while she was dying, they took the same light detector thing and fixed upon her that talks about the truth, and they were able to convert it into the radio waves. So while she was crying, forgiving and groaning, praying for people that have hurt her, she produced some, the prophet called it magnetic prayer. <laughs> okay. While she was crying, groaning in the spirit, forgiving, and telling God how wonderful he is, the power that was measured out of that prayer could send the radio waves around the world five times. Prayer. Prayer is measured. Mm -hmm. I don't know I can get it. A woman can forgive. She cries. And she's forgiving someone. And the intensity of that prayer can be measured and can even produce he said five times over. Another time he says 1,500 1, something. Over. The radio waves produced from prayer. He calls it magnetic prayer. It can go around the world. It is measured. Amen. Your level of revelation is measured. Amen. The level of wine is measured. Your forgiveness is measured. Amen. There is nothing in the house of God that is not measured. Then, the nurse that was there, after this woman has prayed, and the, 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 the scale, do we call it the scale? It could go around like that, that could produce radio waves, five times around the world. There was a man that was also dying of venereal disease. Then there was a woman who went there and provoked him to start speaking obscenities, 
and cursing and taking the name of it, and also the power in it was measured, it could also send the radio waves five times over. This is spiritual dimension in the three dimension. The fifth dimension and the sixth dimension, they had the same power. Everything that you do has a power. It is measured. And that's why Jesus talked about forgiveness. He says 70 times, it goes to show there is a measure. They say the measure you use on others shall be used on you. You know sometimes, you know the reason why people are rebuked and they find it hard, they feel they are being stepped on. Because he's not seeing the relationship between what is being told and his body. He's not seeing the relationship. But if you saw the relationship, you say, no, thank you for helping me. Because I must be that. Amen. By the way, there is no way you can fail to be that. Amen. You can produce the image. You are measured. Amen. There is a measurement for everything that comes into the house of God. Amen. You can't be a Christian today without a measurement. Because there is, as I'm finished, the next two minutes. Because there is a pattern. Amen. Aren't you glad there is a pattern? That someone would go there and say, I saw all of you there. Amen. Who are the people? You know, we used to confuse ourselves on time saying, so where is me? Where is my diophany? Is that diophany me? Mm -hmm. No, it's not you. It is your tabernacle. Amen. It is your cloth. Amen. It is your body. Amen. This is not you. It is your tabernacle. Amen. It is your body. It is your cloth. Amen. So is me. It takes you back to the gene. Isn't that true? Amen. It takes you back to the gene. So you used to wonder. There was another brother asked a question. Now, even I wasn't saved when the prophet went past the curtain of time. So who, how could that be me? So you want to say what he saw was something that is going to be added later. Now that you've believed, now you can be added. He said that when he went there, there was no yesterday or today. Everything is now. Do you know as far as God is concerned, you are not even here. You are subjecting God to time. God is eternal. Amen. And whatever that is done, according to the book of Romans 8, those that he loved, those that he foreknew, those that he, he, he knew, he foreknew, the, I don't know how the scripture says it, he foreknew, he elected, he justified. Those that he has justified, he called. Those that he has called, he has already and he has already, he has already glorified. So according to God, it's already done and finished. It is not something new that God is forcing you to get into. It is a measurement. It's already done. And God moves the devil to do things in your life. You know God, the devil moves God to do things. You are quiet. God told the devil, did you see my servant Job? Although you moved me. You moved me to do what? Yeah. You moved me without a cause. You moved me against him without a cause. Even Isaac going to the Mount Moriah, it was not altogether God. It was the devil telling him, you gave him a son. Tell him now to give that son. And then God was sure of Abraham. But if it was Ishmael that was going to be taken to the Moriah, Ishmael would have told Abraham, Where are you? Do you really know me? But the Bible says Isaac submitted. Amen. Because Isaac was going to meet what? His lamb. You have to go and meet your own lamb. He went there condemned, judged to die, but he came out because there was a lamb. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we appreciate you, Father, because your word is true, Lord. Amen. And Heavenly Father, when you come down, Father, to show us there is a pattern that we are following, Amen. then we realize we are not converting people to go to heaven Amen. like others would say we are populating heaven. We are not. People are only responding to all they were all the time. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, when the deep calleth, the deep answereth. And Heavenly Father, are people, Lord God, with a deposit of the seed God Amen. that is responding to the work of God. Amen. And Heavenly Father, you are making them according to the pattern that was on the backside of your mind. The invisible is becoming visible, Lord. The vision is becoming the image again. It is materializing on earth, Heavenly Father. You are showing us how your people are measured. You are showing us how we, we people, Lord Jesus, there is a plummet over them, Lord. And Heavenly Father, in the book of Revelation, it shows us an angel with a golden reed. In the book of Ezekiel, it shows a man with a reed standing at the gate to measure all the people who are getting in. And Heavenly Father, you are not getting in because you've been so good. Because there are people who are so good that they will never get in. But Heavenly Father, we are getting in because Jesus, we accepted you by the virtue of your blood. And Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus, there has been a connection between the natural me and the spiritual me. The terrestrial me and the supernatural celestial me. There is the new birth. There is the Holy Ghost. There is the blood between the man here on earth and the seed of God. We appreciate you, Father. We bless you. Thank you for these people, Lord. Bless each one of them, O oh Father. Heal those who are sick, O oh Father, in my daughter, Shalom. Father, may you touch and heal her, Lord. And in need, heavenly Father, those who are traveling, Lord, we commit them to you. Father, bless your people. Redeem them, O oh Father. Give them assurance all the time that they may know it's not something that's beginning here. Their journey never began here. They were in the thoughts of the mind of God, and they know who they are. They are not the body, they are not even the spirit, Lord, but they are the gene of God that has already begun the journey going back to it is, Lord. Father, may you bless your people everywhere, Lord, who listen to this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.